Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks. And this is the Tech Travel Geeks first impressions video of the 2021 iPhone 13 Pro. Now, those of you who have been watching the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel for the last few months and years know that we're not particularly enamored with Apple and their products. We're quite excited about the much more affordable devices available from other brands. But I wouldn't be able to call myself a mobile opinionist, or in this case, the chief mobile opinionist at Tech Travel Geeks, without having and using an iPhone to be able to understand what's happening in the world of iOS. Also, I need an excuse to wear my Rene Ritchie t-shirt, just to sh give him a shout out. If you don't already and you're quite passionate about Apple products or want to know much more about them, do subscribe to Rene Ritchie here on YouTube and also on Nebula if you subscribe to, subs to Curiosity Stream and Nebula. I do and I would recommend it. Full disclosure, Curiosity Stream and Nebula are not sponsors of Tech Travel Geeks. Anyway, iPhone 13 Pro. I've had it for a couple of days now. I've been using it as one of my main devices and I have thoughts. So one of the key things that makes people believe that Apple are a premium product is the heft or weight to them. And definitely the iPhone 13 Pro has that to it. It has this stainless steel edges in a glass sandwich where you have Apple's unspecified hardened glass on the front and a matte glass finish on the back. The screen itself is a lovely AMOLED one, not entirely dissimilar to the one that we saw last year on the iPhone 12, but this year it's been improved with 120 hertz refresh rate. This is nothing new if you've been on Android for a few years. High refresh rate screens have been there for a while, and I have to say, this iPhone is really not that different from them in my first few days of using it. Compared to the iPhone 12, yes, it is slightly smoother and it seems slightly more responsive. Is this worth an upgrade though? For most people in everyday use, probably not. And it's great to have the option, but when you're watching video, typing on tweets on Twitter or capturing other content with the camera, I don't see there being that big of a benefit from this, apart from it being a, a value adds that tries to convince you to upgrade from, say, an iPhone 12 Pro to an iPhone 13 Pro. In heavy use, so using it over a few hours, that heft that we were talking about, that premium feel to it, is actually, in my view, a bit of a, an issue. It makes, for example, my little finger a little bit tired when holding the phone for long periods of time. I'm not used to this amount of heft and weight in a smartphone, and my hand did get a little bit tired whilst using it. I much prefer a lighter smartphone in this respect, but then again, this is the way Apple have decided to use their build and industrial know-how, and we have to live with that. There's not much other choice in the Apple ecosystem unless you decide to go for the Apple, 13, Apple iPhone 13 mini. The reason I purchased this and went from a normal iPhone 12 to the iPhone 13 Pro is mainly because of the cameras. The iPhone 13 Pro and the Pro series of Apple products tend to give you slightly better performance in the camera department. And this year I thought the jump was big enough to justify it. So rather than having the two lenses that I've had on the iPhone 12, I went for the three lenses on the iPhone 13 Pro. And those lenses are not only bigger, but also have slightly different technologies behind them. So the iPhone 13 Pro, the main sensor is a 12 megapixel one with sensor shift technology. Now listen to that carefully. It's not sensor shift technology, it's sensor shift technology. That means that it's essentially in-body image stabilization, similar to what we've seen in cameras in the past. That means that the sensor itself does image stabilization to ensure that you get clear shots in low light. You don't have much blur, blur when taking pictures in movement. And more importantly, overall, it enables for better phase detection autofocus. So it has lots of benefits 
And I think that this technology is something that is quite interesting from a mobile photography standpoint. Apple say that they back this up with their usual slew of buzzwords for computational photography. I'm still in the early stages of trying this out and getting my first impressions. We'll likely do a dedicated video about that in the coming weeks. But so far, for my initial cat pictures yesterday at the rugby and in other situations, I think that this is a really good camera phone. Whether it's better than, say, the 108 megapixel Xiaomi I've been using for the last few months, or my Google Pixel 5, is still to be seen. But early indication is that overall it's a great camera and does well. One of the key things during the launch of the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro was the shout-out about cinematic video. In normal video conditions, with the normal standard video performance, I think it does. the iPhone 13 Pro does a good job. Though I am a bit disappointed by cinematic mode. It is quite buggy and it really doesn't capture things like my cat's ears properly or more importantly other things get a bit blurry or not around the edges. But as I said it's buggy. It's not a question of the hardware being at fault here. It's Apple's software and I'm sure this is something they'll be able to build upon and improve on in the coming months and years. That's one of the allures or one of the selling points of Apple products is that the software, iOS, and all the apps on top of that, such as the camera, are supposed to be ever improving. Now, though that is the case, I am also a little bit disappointed by the fact that iOS 15, as it came out of the box, was quite buggy. I've had quite a few screen locks and screen freezes where I've had to switch the device off. A lot of apps and services have overlays or elements of their apps that leak into the header of the operating system. And there's a lot of imperfections, which I'm sure will be fixed, but it's not something I would expect of an Apple product at launch. And more importantly, I wouldn't expect it of a thousand dollar or a thousand pound smartphone. A thousand euros too, if you're of that persuasion. But for a device of this caliber and the amount of buzz that Apple put around it, I'm a little bit disappointed in my first impressions. Hopefully as iOS gets refined and things get improved, things will get better. But as things come out of the box, it's not what I'd expect of a device of this price category. The good news is that a lot of competition will be coming Apple's way in terms of photography. We're expecting the Google Pixel 6 Pro to be released in the coming month and we've definitely earmarked our pocket money to purchase not one but one for myself and one for our chief aperture officer Lukash so that we can really put the iPhone 13 Pro through its paces and have a good reference as to how it performs against the competition. We have great plans around this, we'll tell you in a later video, but for now Make sure you're subscribed to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. Make sure that uh, you have the notification bell turned on. And if you have any further questions, do leave a comment in the section below. For now, thanks for watching this quick first impressions about the iPhone 13 Pro and goodbye from me. Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks. And this is the Tech Travel Geeks unboxing, no it's not, <laughs> and this is the Tech Travel Geek's first impressions video of the 2021 iPhone 13 Pro.